Did you know there is a specific way to apply bronzer, blush and highlighter so that they all complement one another and make the most of one another. You guys are going to love this video today because I'm going to show you exactly how you apply all three together. Now before we head into the video don't forget I have an online publication called Confessions of a Creative which is growing rapidly by the way and I'm so excited about it. Every article is written by me. We cover several different topics such as beauty, health, self, entrepreneurship, fashion and culture. I know you're going to love it over there so head on over there are two subscription options one is free where you get access to some of the site the other is paid which only costs around a coffee a month where you get a little room where we can actually chat and you get access to the entire site plus subscriber perks and benefits and I answer some of the questions that you guys ask over here there's just so much going on over there I know you're gonna love it now heading into the video if you do like this video please do give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos don't forget my on Instagram too. Now let's head straight into this video. As you can see, everything is on my face. I have my base on, I've got my brows, lashes, a bit of lip product on, but the only thing that's missing is my bronzer, blush, and highlighter. Now, a lot of the time, people leave comments on my YouTube videos asking various questions, and this, this seems to be one of the questions that kind of stood out to me because I feel like I've done a few videos on this, but differently. So today, what I really wanna talk about is how do you actually apply them together so that you know exactly what the placement should be, where the blush should be, where the bronzer should be, where the highlighter, highlighter should be because what happens if you do want to apply all three like where can you apply it what's the right positioning so that it doesn't look like it's product overload you don't look like you've got bruised cheeks and yeah it just doesn't pile up and doesn't look too kind of like cakey either because once you've got a nice base on you don't really want to completely ruin it with whatever you apply on top so I'm here to talk you through today exactly where the placement should be and what products you should be using or tools you should be using to actually apply those products so let's get started so the first thing that I'm going to do is go for my bronzer. You want to make sure you apply the products in this order. And the reason being is because, well, I'll explain as I go along, but it's going to give you a good idea of overlapping the product slightly and ensuring that one isn't kind of standing out more than the other. First thing we're going to do is use our bronzer. I'm using my Ella Luz Velveteen Queen Powder Bronzer. This is in Power Play. I really, really do love this color. It's amazing for my skin tone. You want to make sure you use a brush which is a good shape and size for your face. Now, obviously my face is gonna be a different size and shape to anyone else's. And you need to have a look at your brush size. Like how does it fit on your face? Like this size is perfect for me to apply bronzer here because I feel like it's not too big, but it's not too small. So it's not so big that it's gonna kind of like end up covering a larger area. And it's not too small where it's gonna look very precise and kind of too sharp, if you see what I mean. You've also gotta make sure that your brush is nice and kind of like a dome shape because that's going to give you a nice kind of dispersed edge it that doesn't even make sense it's going to give you a really nice soft finish to the to the edges of where you've applied the product so it's going to soften the edges of where you've applied the bronzer if you use a brush which is quite sharp and angled you are going to end up especially the edges of the brush if they're not too soft and rounded you're going to end up with a line as opposed to a kind of soft sculpt look so just be careful about the brush that you use that can change the way the product looks completely. So this is my hourglass veil brush. This is the smaller side of the brush that I'm using. I usually use the larger side for like dusting powder and stuff, but I'm going to use this. Now, this is how I apply my bronzer. I'm going to press into my bronzer. Bronzer is always going to end up, if you go straight into your face, end up looking like, wow, that is a lot of bronzer. So always make sure you take the excess off either on the back of your hand or on a tissue, right? You wanna take the excess off there. Don't be afraid about how much you're actually taking off because it may feel like, oh, you've taken all of it off on the tissue, but actually when you go into your face, it will be just the right amount. You're gonna see this now for yourself. So I'm starting from the top of the ear and we are basically pressing. And I very slightly kind of go, like, it's one of those like really sarcastic smiles. It's like, you wouldn't really do it in real life, but you're kind of like, <laughs> that's what you're doing so we're doing that because when I do that to my face and again it will be different for you it kind of gives me an indication as to where see here I can see it kind of like has a little bit of an indent if you can't find that indent off on yourself usually it's from the top of the ear and you work your way in and you can apply it kind of like in but you can finish it in between your nose and your lip now we're using bronzer let me let you in on a little secret you can use it wherever you want 
You don't have to only use it to bronze your face, you can use it to sculpt. There are no rules in makeup. There are some rules, but you know, ultimately you can be as creative as you wanna be. And if it's a similar color to a contour product you use, then great, you know? So you can use it to sculpt as well. I am gonna to explain to you how you can use this if you wanna use it as a bronzer too. I'm showing you both. So I'm using this to sculpt my face. So I'm gonna, as you can see, top of the ear. Can you see we finish around here because I don't want it to come all the way in. I'm, I don't want the center of the face to be kind of like have much going on there. So I wanna keep it along kind of the perimeter of the face. Okay, so now that we've kind of got a good idea, we've been buffing it in like that. We can now, whatever's left on the brush, we can now actually move the brush back and forth. This is just gonna soften it all, bring it together. There you go. We've got this really nice kind of sculpting going on there. Nothing over here, but yet here we've got that really nice sculpting. The other places that I wanna apply this bronzer are kind of on areas where you would probably traditionally hear about where bronzer should be, which is everywhere where the sun would hit, right? Which to be honest, I personally feel like you can use it for whatever you want. But anyway, I'm just gonna go with it anyway. So for example, you can just bronze up the forehead area just to warm it up a bit. So this isn't really about kind of like contouring. This is just kind of like, just giving you some warmth. You can go along the cheekbone here, like along the cheek area and any other area that you want, right? So that's if you wanna bronze it. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side in terms of the sculpting. So we're gonna press it from the top of the ear. Once we've got a good idea, we are then going to basically smooth it and soften it. Next, we are gonna move on to blush. Now I'm gonna be using my Surat blush. We've got two shades here. I'm just gonna use the pink one here, which I'll put the name on the screen. Now I'm gonna use a similar size brush, but it's just a different brush because I don't have two of my veil brush. And this one is my Sigma setting powder brush, which is the F12. And I like this because the shape is kind of similar to my veil brush and a similar size. So I'm gonna go into my pink blush here. And again, taking a little bit off on the back of a tissue, I'm just gonna press it onto the tissue once, that's normally enough. Now where I'm gonna be applying this is just above where I've applied my bronzer, but I'm not taking it too far in and I'm not too, taking it too far out. So you kind of really wanna focus on going, overlapping on top of the bronzer slightly, but not too much. So not like covering it completely. But we want it just kind of, overlapping the edge of the bronzer. I am happy with where that is now. Let's do the same here. So you can see I'm not focusing on taking it into the hairline and I'm not bringing it too far in either. See, now I feel like I've got the sculpting. So I've got bronzer and anywhere else we've applied it. I've got my blush, which you can see here, just sitting above it, like perched above the bronzer. Then we are gonna move on to our highlighter. And I'm gonna be using my Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in Mood Light. Now this is where you do want a specific brush. You want something which isn't gonna be like too big, not too small either. So I'm gonna use my Sigma F35 brush, which is my tapered highlighter brush. And you can see, this is kind of nicely tapered, so there's no kind of harsh edge. It's very soft. It's like a slightly pointy at the top, very slightly. So you can really kind of get that kind of tip and get some detail there. Or you can just use the, kind of like the side of the brush a little bit. So this is a really good brush for highlight. Now I'm gonna be using the kind of this rose shade there because the other one's too light for me. Now what I'm gonna do is do the same thing. Put the brush into that product, dab the first dab on top of a tissue so that it takes the excess off. Now the place where we want to apply this is the highest point of the cheekbone. If you turn to the side, look in the mirror, you will see where your highest point is. Here is where mine is. I've got my finger there. So I know that that is where I want to apply it. This is the easiest way for you to tell where to apply your highlighter because ultimately the highlighter should sit at the peak of your cheekbone where the light is going to hit it, reflect off and enhance the area. We don't want to apply it anywhere where, and usually this area usually doesn't have much text, texture, but obviously if you do and you don't want to enhance it, I would suggest using even a matte highlighter, like a matte pressed powder, which is a little bit lighter than your skin, because even though it's not shimmery, it does highlight the area still. I know where my highest point is, right, right there. 
So I'm now gonna very lightly touch the peak of this area and you are gonna slowly see it, even though I'm applying a very, like my brush is literally skimming the skin. It's not really brushing back and forth because I don't want that obvious kind of look. Now you will see it start to, there you go. You can already see it, it's nothing there. And then here, you can see where, where we've kind of like just enhanced the area. I don't like it when there's a strip because it just looks, it just doesn't look real. We just wanna to touch the area where we want that highlight to be. We don't want it to kind of be like crazy. This is more than enough. Now, this is the way that you can apply all three of those products without it looking like, wow, she's got bronzer on, she's got blush on, she's got highlighter on, she's got all this product on on top of her base. It's just way too much going on. Plus, it's so kind of compact, yet you can still see the difference and the effect that each gives without it actually overtaking the whole side of your face. So that is the key here. You really wanna make sure you stick to within a certain area and you don't overdo it with the amount of product for each one. There is a certain amount that each product requires in order for it to be effective and not overpowering. So you can see we've got the sculpting from our bronzer and the warmth from it. We've got the blush, the color, which is popping through, kind of sandwiched in between the highlighter and the bronzer. And then you've got the bronzer, which is only visible on the peak of the cheekbone, right? So there's different amounts that we've applied, but together they kind of sit in a very uniform way that kind of complement one another. And they kind of like bind together to really give you the best of each other. So I'm gonna do the same on the other eye, on the other side. So I can see that's the peak here. Let's just kind of press this lightly. There you go, I am happy with that. So hopefully that has given you a better understanding as to how to apply bronzer, blush and highlight together, where they should be sitting and how they complement one another and how much you apply of each one and what kind of brush it works best for it, how they should be kind of like complementing one another. So it all kind of is important to understand what each one does and how much you need to apply of each. And hopefully this has really made you understand like you can wear all three as long as you kind of make them work together to, to, to kind of like push each other along. So hopefully that's really helped you. I know that I personally feel like it makes it a lot easier to understand. Now, hopefully you will actually try this and use all three together because I know sometimes like in the past there were, there were times where I was like, oh, okay, I can't use all three. It's just gonna be way too much. And then over time I kind of figured out my own face and I, I figured out what worked after working on numerous clients and everything. And you know, this is what I felt worked really, really well. And I felt like this was the easiest way for me to explain explain how this works and how you can still use all three. So I hope it's helped you in some way. Wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you loads of love. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.